Okay. Okay. So, um, like I said in the prayer, today's, uh, let me, first of all, let me share my screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, so today's um, lesson is a review of lessons 11 through 19 that we studied thus far. And um, what I wanted to do today, I wanted to cover as many lessons as possible. I don't know if we will be able to get through exactly all of them. But if there are, if there's one or two that we don't cover, uh, we'll, I will uh, cover it in the next lesson uh, in two weeks. And then we will have a, a quiz. It's, um, it's, a, it's going to be a review quiz, almost like, um, well, not almost, but it's going to be a game like uh, Je like Jeopardy. So uh, we will have questions in different categories. And I don't know, I haven't decided if we're going to just split up into maybe two teams, two or maybe three teams, or if, if we'll just do each student separately. And then whoever has the most at the end of the game, I think we'll do teams. We'll do maybe two teams. And whichever team has the most at the end, then um, that team will get a prize. So let's begin first with the review of each lesson. But before we begin the review, um, there are... Memory verses in a lesson 11 through 19, we cover two memory verses. Can anyone tell me one of the memory verses? Uh, if you don't know the entire verse, can you name the scripture? I'll give a hint. Both of the memory verses are in Psalms. I'll give another hint. <laughs> <laughs> Both of the memory verses are in Psalms 8. Mm -hmm. So can anyone tell me the two verses? Or just one verse? Anyone? Children or adults, if you know. Even if you don't know the, the entire verse, do you remember the exact verses that we have been practicing? Or trying to memorize? Okay, the first one is Psalms 8, 3 through 4. And, of course, we're going to um, sing that, that song, but Psalms 8, 3 through 4 is, When I look at your the, heaven. The work of your fingers, uh -huh. the moon and stars, which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yes, exactly. You guys remember that now? Is it bringing back? It's coming back. Memory? Jogging back? Okay, so if you don't remember, <laughs> we will watch the um, video with the hand movements and maybe it will jog their memory more. 
There you go. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of a man, the son of man that you care for him? Whoa, what? Okay, so one more time. That was Psalms 8, 3 through 4. Okay, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Psalms 8, 3 through 4. Okay, the next memory verse, I will give you a, another hint. <laughs> so the next memory verse are the next two verses, actually, in Psalms. Psalms, five, uh, Psalms 8, 5 through 6. Does anyone know those memory verses? Anyone want to take a try at it? Okay, let's look at those new reverses. Psalms um, eight, five through six. Um. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and I'm, I'm singing the song, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's be reminded of the song.
So with those with those two um, memory verses, we should know Psalms 8, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So Psalms 8, 3 through 6, we should know all of those verses. So... Question number one, what was the first memory verse? Can anyone tell me? Well, Psalms 8, 3 and 4. Yes. Nice. Very good, Pastor Levi. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> See, I got it. I got okay. It. <laughs> what can anyone tell me the second memory verse? Psalms 8, Psalms 8. Five and six. Okay, very good, Mom. Huh? Great job. Can anyone tell me what those memory verses are? Mm -hmm. So let's look one more time. So for those that are just joined us, we are reviewing um, all of the lessons. Well, not all, but a lesson eleven through um, nineteen. So we're just going over the both memory verses that we've covered from uh, lesson 11 through um, lesson 19. So let me go back. Okay, one more time. I want to make sure that we remember, remember these verses. So three through four is when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? That's Psalm 8, 3 through 4. Psalm 8, 3 through 4. And then the second verse talks about dominion. Psalms 8, 5 through 6 is, yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Psalms mm -hmm. 8, 
five through six. Okay. So now let's move on to our, I'm sure this is you guys' favorite part, the books of the Bible. If it comes up. Okay. Sorry. Okay. The books of the Bible. I want to spend one time. We're going to sing with the music, the books of the Bible. And then we're going to sing one time and with no words. So the first time that we listen, the words will play. The second time it will be music only with no words. Mm -hmm. And I want everyone to see and to see how far in the Bible you can go naming all of the books, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first time we're just uh, reviewing all of the books. And then the second time we're going to sing the song without the words. And I've sent both of these videos for um, everyone to practice these with the words and without the words. The books of the Bible, time tested and reliable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers and Deuteronomy Joshua, Judges, Ruth First and Second Samuel First and Second Kings First and Second Chronicles Ezra, Nehemiah Esther, Job, and Psalms Proverbs, Ecclesiastes Song of Solomon Isaiah, Jeremiah Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The books of the Bible, their wisdom's verifiable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, 1 and 2 1st Timothy 2nd Timothy Titus Philemon Hebrews James 1st and 2nd Peter 1st and 2nd John 3rd John Jude and Revelation the books of the Bible time tested and reliable now you know all 66 books of the Bible Okay, you guys got it? Of course. Okay, so this time I want everyone to sing. This is only this um, accompaniment. Okay. okay.
Titus Okay, did you guys make it through? Yes, we did. Okay, there we go. Okay. So we're going to start on lesson 11. And uh, today, lesson 11 was the seven C's of history. The Bible is the history book of the universe. So that's what we, um, lesson 11 was talking about the seven C's. Before we, before I get into the seven C's, can anyone tell me one of the C's? It, we don't have to go in order. Creation. Creation is one of the C's, correct? Corruption. Mm -hmm. Corruption, it, very good. That You guys are actually in order. So the first one is creation. The next one is corruption. Can anyone tell me number three? Catastrophe. Um, catastrophe is one. Confusion. Confusion, yes. Um. Catastrophe is number three. Confusion is number four. So after the um, Tower of Babel, who comes? Way after, actually. Well, Noah. What do you mean, the ark? Uh, someone that name starts with a C. Oh. Uh, who someone said something that I didn't hear it's basically who's the like the main character of the bible <laughs> very good sister Linda Christ Christ and then um, can you give me another C that has to do with Christ where what does he die on the cross. Very good. Then we have the cross. So that's number six. And then number seven. Does anyone know what number seven is? Crucifixion. Um, very good guess. Consummation. <laughs> Consummation. Very good. Shucks. <laughs> that was a great guess, though. Great guess. So creation. Then we have the corruption catastrophe, then confusion, then comes Christ, then the cross, and then we have consummation. So let me give a background of each one uh, or a summary. So God's word, which is the Bible, is the history book of the universe. Mm -hmm. In lesson 11, we found out there are seven C's of history. Um, we can use to help us remember what the history in the Bible includes. Creation, which is number one. God created everything in six literal 24-hour days. It was not millions of years ago, but about 6,000 years ago. And then the next one is corruption. That is when sin entered the world because Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Then we move on to, I'm sorry, yes, catastrophe. There was a worldwide flood because God judged the wickedness of men. Noah and his family survived, which was only eight people. And because God had mercy to because God was merciful to spare them. Then we move on to confusion. 
about 100 years after the flood, men sinned again. So God punished them by confusing their language at the Tower of Babel. And then we have Christ. Mankind continued to sin. So God, I'm sorry, God sent Jesus to provide a way for sinners to be saved. And that way was through the cross. Jesus, the perfect man, the perfect God, I'm sorry, Jesus, the perfect God man became the perfect sacrifice for sins when he died on the cross and took the punishment of himself that sinners deserve from God. Then he rose again, conquering death so that believers can have an eternal life. And then last is the consummation. At the end of history, Jesus will return for all believers and God will create a new heaven and a new earth where they will live forever with God. And we are getting very close to this last C, the consummation part. And so lesson 12, we talked about, uh, the title is God Creates the Universe. The account of God's creation reveals that he is an all-powerful, omnipotent creator. That is what omnipotent means, all powerful. So lesson 12, does it matter in what order things were created? The answer to that question comes from God's word. That's why we focus on the importance of the order of events during the creation week. Genesis 1 is a historical account of how the universe was created. By simply speaking, the, the omnipotent God created everything with just his words. And he tells us the order in Genesis 1. So um, on day one, can anyone tell me what God created on day one? Night. Night. Um, um, okay. Part of that. I, I would so he created the heavens and the earth, and he created light. Okay? So the heavens, the earth, and light. That is what we have on day one. What about day two? The sky. Very good. The atmosphere or the sky, the things that are in the sky, or the air. So the, the firmament is what it's called in the Bible. So it's the things above our heads, basically, the atmosphere. And then what about on day three? Dry, um, dry land. On day three, we have dry land and all the plants. So things that are on the, the land and plants trees and flowers, things like that on day three. What about day four? The sun. Mm, good guess. Well, actually, yes. the sun and the moon and stars and planets. So when you think about all of the things in the solar system, all of those things, except for our, the earth, that's what he created, or that is what is created on day four. Okay? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. What about day five? 
animals. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yes. The animals so that are specific animals he made on day five. So we have the, the animals in the sea and birds, animals in the air. So things, fish in the sea and birds in the air on day five. And what about day six? Adam and people. Mm -hmm. You are killing it, Damani. Yes. The land, animals, and people, which is his most precious creation. Us. Mm -hmm. So we have everything that's on the land, the animals that are on the land, and Adam and Eve were made on day six. Perfect. Very good job. Okay. So now let's move on to lesson 13. And lesson 13, we talked about uh, creation, days, and kinds. So we emphasize that God created all things in six 24-hour days. Some people want to believe that the days were very, very long, like thousands of years long or millions of years long. Like there, it was not a normal day, but a very long time. And that is not true. When we look at creation, those six days that we talked about right here, these are six regular days, okay? Six regular days. And um, the word that we learned was yom, and it rhymes with home. Yom, I think I'm saying that right, yom. And that is the Hebrew word for one day, which is 24 hours. Yom. And, uh, okay, lesson 13, we find out that the Hebrew word yom used in context <clears throat> points to the day of creation being regular 24 hour days. We could tell from the context that they were 24 hour days because the Bible says evening and morning mm -hmm. and the specific day so evening and morning the first day evening and morning the second day and it goes on like that uh, in the bible when the word yom yom i'm sorry yom is used this way it always means 24 hours yom so when they when we see the same Hebrew word in Genesis, it means that it's 24 hours. It's not a different time span. It's not years or longer than what we usually use the word for. It's what it is. <laughs> okay. Um we also looked at what was created on the first four days of creation week, we saw that God created the earth, the sea, the land, and all the plants, which were created in distinct kinds, as well as the sun, moon, and stars to mark the passage of time and provide light on earth. So let's look at... Lesson 14, lesson 14, we focused on uh, days five and six, I'm sorry. Okay, so lesson 14, creation, animals and man was the title. And God created the animals and man on days five and six. So uh, we focused on creation days five and six when God created animals and man. You may remember God create, created 
flying animals, sea creatures, and land animals on those two days. God created all the animals according to their kinds. One kind cannot change into another, nor can two different kinds interbreed or mix. These animals did not evolve from an ancient common ancestor. And unlike animals, man was created, uh, man was created in God's image. That's when we learned that. And man was given dominion over the animals. Because of this, God has a unique relationship with mankind that he doesn't have with the rest of the earthly creation. All of the creation brings glory to God, but God has chosen mankind to have a special relationship with him. So this lesson focuses on um, animals and man, and it emphasizes that man is has a special relationship and so we looked at verse uh, Genesis 1, 21. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swam according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 24 through 25 says, and God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind and God saw that it was good then God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, I want to, let's do, I think we have time for lesson 15 and then we'll stop after lesson 15. Uh, lesson 15, we talked about the creation of Adam and Eve. The biblical account of the creation of man is very different from the evolutionary view. And I'm sure that we have all seen this picture in our textbooks where it starts as a chimp or a, a monkey. And then somehow this animal evolves into a human. This is not what the Bible teaches us. God did not make a, an animal and then the animal turns into a human. God made animals and then God also made humans. Two different things. And our relationship with God is different than the animals. Uh, okay, so um, lesson 15, the Bible tells us how God created man first and then woman. After Genesis 1 mentions, mentions it briefly, Genesis 2 fills in some of the details of the events of day 6. Different from the evolutionary view of the origin of man, God made man in his image. We did not evolve, but 
we were specially created. God made man first from dust and, and woman was formed from Adam's rib by a loving creator who designed them to complete one another. So man and woman go together. It's a pair. God said a man would leave his father and mother and join with his wife. That was the first marriage. It was God's perfect design. One man and one woman for life. But people have been corrupted, corrupting God's design for marriage since the entrance of sin into the world. They choose to live sinfully, dis disregarding God's marriage plan. Thankfully, there is a remedy for every sin. Christ offers forgiveness and redemption for all who come to him for forgiveness and salvation. God's loving care is demonstrated both in the creation of man and woman and in the redemption of mankind. And um, we will end. Biblical marriage is one man married to one woman for life. This comes from the pattern set by God's creation of Eve from Adam's side, which we looked at in Genesis 2. And the words of Christ regarding the allowance for divorce because of the hardness of people's heart, which we can find in Mark 10. And um, are there any questions? Okay. So, um, let's, let's do lesson 16. So we have less for next time. <laughs> Okay, uh, lesson 16, we talked about dinosaurs and dragons. The biblical, the Bible describes dinosaurs and dragons that live uh, alongside man. Okay, lesson 16 was about dinosaurs and dragons. Because the Bible is our starting point, we know that Man and the land, man and the land dinosaurs, like behemoth, were both created on day six of creation week. And we also know that sea creatures like Leviathan were created on day five. Because we read of great sea creatures and other giants and dragons in scripture, we can trust that they were real creatures. So the legends of fire-breathing dragons are very possibly encounters with those real creatures. The legends have been passed down and embellished over the centuries. They record incredible encounters with fierce fire-breathing beasts. And since people saw and heard about dragons, they made rock drawings, carved images, and artifacts like coins and pottery to record what they saw. Those legends and images from around the globe confirm the idea that man and dinosaurs truly did live together. And we looked at the scripture in Job, which is Job 40, 15, um, it talks about behemoth, and it says, Behold, behemoth, which I made as I made you, he eats grass like an ox. And then the Leviathan, uh, Job 41, 1 says, Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook or press down his tongue with a cord? Can you draw uh, the same thing again? Uh, verse 2. Can you put a rope in his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? And uh, we talked about how there are different legends 
of fire breathing dinosaurs or dragons that come from not only just one place, but all around the world. And then we will stop there. Next, uh, in two weeks, we'll review lesson 17, 18, and 19. And then we will do the Jeopardy quiz. Any questions? Any comments? What do we have to? What do? What do we have to have Sunday school in the next two weeks? <laughs> so we only have Sunday school. We don't. Have